Get to the real talk. No cap. You hear us? We reflect you. We talk controversial topics. We discuss equity, inclusion, mental health, feminism, LGBTQIA, and everything beyond and in between. Get involved. Get to the real talk. No cap. Thank you for tuning in to Real Talk No Cap, where we talk about all the issues that are trending and all the issues that are not trending with mental wellness and mental health. I am here from Owens Community Counseling Services, um, and my name is Royan Johnson, and my guest co-host today is Mejean Lutzenheiser. I am a transformational coach. Very happy and privileged to work in correlation with RJ at Owens. Wonderful. And today we will be talking about mental health awareness. But first, I want to shout out Rob Thomas doing our background technical stuff. We are here with Outcast OCCR, Owens Community College Radio. Mental health awareness. First of all, we have to state we don't have enough time today to this, dissect. This lifetime. <laughs> in, in a <laughs> lifetime. There's not a lifetime. We don't have the time to dissect this thoroughly. However, the goal, the hope is that we get enough said and we bring enough awareness in the time that we do have for you, the listener, to just be enticed and excited and proactive mm. in your knowledge about mental wellness, mental health. Mm-hmm. What's popping up for you? What's on your mind today, uh, Meiji? I am a popcorn popper. Um, <laughs> so lots and lots. Um, I, I'm thinking like, okay, what is mental health? You know, it's like, it's almost like the word, the term itself has been stigmatized. Mm-hmm. You know, like, oh, my mental health. That means like a bad thing. But it is something that we all are privileged to have at birth. <laughs> Right. <laughs> and uh, either we take care of it like we take care of our teeth, right, and our eyes. So it's it's sort of mandatory, right, for us to, okay, got to get your dental visit in. You've got to get your physical done. But guess what supersedes your physical health, your mental health? Absolutely. So interconnected, so intertwined. Yeah, yeah, it's like, all, I, I was talking to you earlier how, you know, I always talk about sitting at the table uh, on behalf of my mini clients, <laughs> my youth clients um, who are on IEPs and 504s, and um, the conversation there is always about mental health, right? Mm-hmm. Because um, when we don't respect a child's needs on any level, it affects them mentally, right? It affects all all of us and that's the thing i've been saying lately like you know they're talking oh this is hard for a first grader and i'm thinking this is hard for me right yes this is hard for a human being and it's so much harder when that human being has to rely on a bunch of adults without a clue so this brings up this is a wonderful point and it brings up a very trending video on tiktok Mm -hmm. where a substitute teacher and again don't quote me i don't know the exact roles of the participants but we do know that one person in that classroom was an adult and we know one person in this classroom in altercation was a child and they're on social media there is so much backlash about the behavior of the child really and i was in just i was just perplexed i'll say befuzzled so to speak <laughs> how so many adults came for that child and their behavior. And my message is, I need you guys to see, A, that both of those people in that video were going through something immense Mm. and terrible. And they were vastly vulnerable Mm. and in vulnerable states for the situation to have escalated to to the intensity that it did. Right. However... One of those people was a child. Mm. Violent or not, that was a child. Mm. And the expectation, the hope, I won't even say expectation because I Mm. don't expect anything of anyone, but Mm -hmm. the hope was that the adult would have carried themselves better, more professionally, more in control of themselves rather than 
getting in a physical altercation with a child. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the, the way that people came for my responses on Facebook, it's like, you don't understand, you know, chastity starts in the home. Yes, but we understand that this is a systemic issue among our communities and among our generation. Mm -hmm. And so at what point do we as adults take responsibility that if managing a situation like that was difficult for an adult, Mm -hmm. then why do we have a higher expectation for the child? You freaking nailed it. Um, Yeah, yeah. Thank you. And ding, 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 ding. Everybody who's commenting with their toxicity you know, check yourself before you wreck yourself. (laughs) Like, what are you talking about? And, oh, you're an adult, and I guess you're perfect. Like, get so many high horses all over the place. And forget about, you know, and and that's that's like this thing on a collective scale. It's a real eye-opening reality check for where we are. I mean, I think if you go on social media, there's a whole lot of there's very a- sad reality <laughs> checks happening. It's this probably, you know, you want to see the problem, go on social media, right? Yes. But, yeah, you know, that's so funny because I would not expect that even there. I would expect that at least half the people would say, wait a second, or most of the people would say, oh, wait a second. Meanwhile, what you said was very important. <clears throat> and this is what I'm driving to. At the culmination of all of my research, I was about to start studying the difference between adults and children because I am convinced at this point that the only difference is life experience. The amount, right? The time that you've been here experiencing things, which doesn't necessarily make you smarter. And don't, we can't get into that. Don't take another 62 years off topic, (laughs) you know? But this adult just as well as the child right um required some amount of self-awareness a level of insight a level of mental wellness is the bottom line because that self-awareness contributes greatly to mental wellness if i don't even know where i am and where i came from all over the place you know what's going to come out of that like how do you control who you are when you're not even aware of who you are right and I think it lends itself you know just as you're saying it lends itself to mental health awareness Mm -hmm. and how much of it is existing in our communities that a video such as this will be shared a million times over will go viral Mm -hmm. but let's show a video of a teacher doing the right thing and having the appropriate response Mm -hmm. how many views and likes will that get and I think it really speaks to our nation that we are so apt to respond to negativity and mental we are addicted mental dysfunction to mental dysfunction yes we are addicted we have a proclivity towards it and it makes sense because if we look at the brain and behavior we know that the brain is um, gives more rewards if we were to you know Brene Brown talks about this tell the story right um, it creates a story where there's a good guy and a bad guy whereas an evolved mindset does not tell that story, right. meaning we have to rise above just the basics of the brain, meaning we have to control what we're doing. We have to call the shots on our behavior rather than defaulting to our brain, which we're all well aware is yes. the caveman brain yes. still. And that's a different story that I've had a conversation <laughs> uh, with the powers that be out in the heavens but yeah so because I'm like why do I still have a caveman brain could you just not fix that you know but (laughs) there's a reason a lot of the belief system around depression for instance Mm -hmm. has been that it's a um an imbalance a chemical chemical imbalance in the brain yes and now we're seeing it's more about an environmental imbalance. Absolutely, the experiences that people are afforded and allotted and whether or not they have access. And so when you speak to mental health as a privilege, it absolutely is. Mm -hmm. It is a privilege. And when you say we're given that at birth, it's the one place where I'm gonna give pause and Mm -hmm. say it should be a birthright. Mm -hmm. However, what we know clinically is that as infants, Mm -hmm. you Mm -hmm. inherit 
That's true. the trauma it's way before birth. of your parent, of your grandparents, of everyone that came before you. There are some of us still carrying traumas from slavery. Yes. There are some of us still carrying traumas yes. from the Holocaust. If you are a boomer and you were a part of the depression, you are still stacking those, uh, what do they call those jars of food? I don't have the word. It's not coming to me right now. But you're still packing jars full of food in your pantry for when there is a possible subsequent depression in our nation which it seems on the rise we're we're all terrified at this point of our financial state (laughs) of the u.s right the u.s dollars definitely uh (laughs) talk about trending topics but Mm. And it should be related topic, right? <laughs> mental health should be a birthright. It is. It is not. And I think when you dissect um, different demographics and different cultures, yes, you're going to be a child born already with traumas. Or if there was substance abuse in your family, you're going to be genetically predisposed to yeah. that. So the the access and the quickness for you to develop addictive behaviors mm-hmm. is going to be far higher than someone who didn't have that in their family. Or if your family never experienced trauma, are you likely? You could have mental wellness challenges, but definitely less likely. We know that there is a correlation mm-hmm. between one generation. It's why they call it transgenerational trauma, mm-hmm. because it is handed down in the DNA mm-hmm of the very beings that we are. Um, And I think that is the awareness. And why aren't we addressing that? And we see in the medical field, they will screen for mental wellness. Do you feel depressed today? You know, you're, that you go see. That is not even <laughs> to be <laughs> qualified <laughs> as a screening. Do you see how you know? we broke into laughter? <laughs> I'm just like, my thing, uh, and you know, I don't know if I should say this out loud, but I will tell. I'm not telling you because I don't even know what you're doing. And I would like, I don't even know what you're doing with that. I don't trust you. Get a clue. Wherever the heck that idea came from literally was from a hole in someone's body and not from the top portion. So it's like, what are you doing? That it's almost, it's it's aggravating your mental health. Well, it's going through the motions because some organization somewhere said that these questions should be screened. And it's like, what are you doing with this information? If I tell you that I'm having suicidal ideation as a patient with my PCP, what are you going to do with that information? However, you won't believe me if I tell you I am having pain in my back. Mm -hmm. You'll associate that to something else or tell me, disregard my level, invalidate my level of pain, but you'll believe me right away. But then what do you do with that? And so there's a disparity there. Like we, okay, let's bring it back to mental wellness. Yeah, that doesn't run deep. And so, so when when we're talking about how it's more environmental than chemical, right? And even even what's handed down, what you were saying, it brings us even more to this next point that part of the environmental factors are what we decide to practice and what we allow ourselves to believe. And I love that part because yeah. the power is now back in your hands. So thank goodness, right? Yes, because, yes. you know, we could talk about and we just have talked about quite a bit all the issues that should convince you not to rely on the medical profession. I'm not saying the medical profession is blah, 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 but inappropriate to rely on the medical profession. Any um, <clears throat> good doctor will tell you that, right? Yeah. Um, and uh, not to rely on anyone, even you as an amazing therapist can tell people, you can't help them if they cannot help themselves. The best thing that you ever do is give them tools to start mobilizing themselves into an increased mental health state, right? I love that word mobilization and I always say it's guidance Mm. and it's providing the tools Um, you know another trending video out there is the robot that deactivated itself after 15 minutes of doing the one task it was programmed to do and of course we know that AI robots do not have emotions right but this robot said this is the one task I am challenged with and I refuse to do this it is pointless and deactivated itself, literally dropped to the ground. And it made me think about us as humans, right? Yeah. We do have choices. 
and we do have emotions. And yes, we want to factor in the chemical imbalances. We want to factor in the genetic predispositions. We want to factor in the transgenerational trauma. Mm -hmm. And we want to factor in that we have a choice. Mm -hmm. We have a choice, an inherent choice to say, this is difficult. I am in a depressive state. Here is what I'm going to do to mitigate the challenges that I will face in just getting out of bed today, mm. in just getting to the shower, in just mm. brushing my teeth. Oh, my gosh. We are not robots, <clears throat> and we cannot yeah. deactivate in the way that that robot did with the one choice it was programmed with. Mm. We have many. Mm. And it's what are we choosing today? Have we been made aware enough of our choices uh. to choose something different? And have we decided that it is, you always have options. I remember you said to me in the heat of my <laughs> um, mental unwellness, <laughs> you're like, oh, it's the, the have to's. The have tos, mm. I have to, I have to, and I was like, no, I know what I have. I'm thinking in my head, I know that I don't have to do everything. And then I was like, it just later went Pff. like, no, I don't. I've decided that I have to do everything. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd made a lot of decisions that were disarming me where it came to my mental health. It's like, I'm a single mom. I have to do everything for my kids. I have to raise my kids alone. I also have to raise their father alone, so help me God. Um, I have to, you know what I mean? Right. I have to go, you know, I have to pack my schedule. I have to run until I'm dead. I have to, I have to, it's just me. I have to, all of these stories. Mm -hmm. And it's like, wait a second. You know, we have to see where we are submitting to someone else's story, to maybe a collective story that has been made for your category of living, oh. like single mom, this, that, whatever, Yield black, white, purple. Oh, we yeah, love it. That's right. And so, again, and I know we've even talked about this before, because if we're going to talk anything, anything about mental health, it has to have, um, we have to talk about empowerment. Right. And we have to talk about rising above the illusion that is created for us. And that's where this awareness that you were talking about, yes. like, this is not, you know, there are things that have been handed down to me. And scientifically, like, seven generations before you were dealing with everything they didn't deal with, it's a beautiful thing to know. Because if you can deal with your mm -hmm. stuff, right? Yeah then you are passing, you are not passing down all of those things that you were handed, but to know that I've got this and I've also got this life that I've been living in the moment I step out of the womb, I'm being asked to sign all of these contracts. You're beautiful, oh, yes. you're not beautiful, you're this, you're that, you're a girl, you love pink, you know. All of this and these stories, you know, I need to be, my body needs to look like this, my face needs to look like this, my this needs to. And what does it mean when you don't fit the narrative that society has created. Mm -hmm. And that's where the mental wellness challenges come in. It mm -hmm. is an internal dissonance that mm. happens and occurs when you don't fit the perfect body, the perfect symmetrical face, um, where your story isn't privileged and mm -hmm. you aren't born into this financial stability that it really is, it should be a birthright. It should be a birthright to be born within financial stability. So we, we look at mental wellness and mental uh, health awareness and say, where's the solution? And when I think awareness, one of the, the biggest solutions that come up to me is disseminating the information of resources. Mm. How do we get more information out there about where to get the guidance and the tools and the resources mm -hmm. to proactively address one's mental wellness. Mm -hmm. And I think um, that's a good segue. Uh, one of the really important things um, I have learned in regard to mental health, mental wellness, is um, <clears throat> we are the loneliest society that has ever lived mm -hmm. because we are the first society ever in human history to uh, not be part of a tribe. 
Right. And I think of myself, like my, my daughter said to me yesterday, you have a lot of close friends, right? Or friends or whatever. I was like, all I have are close friends. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I'm very all or nothing. But yes, I said I'm really, really privileged. And then um, as I was reflecting on my way here this morning, I was like, yet... <laughs> How often do I not engage with those friends? And I am a highly sensitive being, which means I need a lot of recovery time. The more I have going on in a week, the more time I need alone in that week. But I'm like, I feel like it's become, I I can't say, I do feel like it's become a foreign thing, uh, a foreign idea. I do feel like I'm not sure I understand as someone with a lot of mental health awareness, right? A lot, right? Maybe not all of it, but definitely not all of it. Anyway, um, (laughs) you know, I have some, right? Um, I really, I don't know that I understand what to do with what seems to be a disparity because I definitely experience something like loneliness. And then I'm like, well, what do I choose to you know give up my recuperation time where I need to be alone or do Mm -hmm. I you know like I don't have enough time to not be lonely you know because I need but then it brought me even deeper into it's the choices that I make about my time Mm -hmm. and then that's the real challenge because then I'm asking for miracles and I really am. And I'm saying that not to say that I'm asking for something impossible because I refuse for that to be impossible. But it's like, you know, I do make a lot of wild choices as a single mom to work part time and miraculously pay my bills. Do you know what I mean? Right. And, you know, um, push for higher pay and this and that and the other. I'm seeing like, I think that that is something so important to to realize that we are practicing loneliness and the more we practice the opposite of loneliness whatever that is for you yeah is the healthier we'll be and that is a more powerful fact scientifically proven than this talk about imbalance and predisposition because we have no choice in the imbalance we have no choice in the predisposition but we do have a choice in our practices what we practice in our daily life Absolutely. And and that loneliness, well, loneliness is a physical and emotional state. Mm -hmm. You can be alone in a crowded Mm -hmm. Starbucks Mm -hmm. Panera doing your homework and still feel alone. You can be alone in your apartment, you know, in a chat room, in a (laughs) meetup chat or in a video conference. So, you know, it speaks to that being a state of mind, both physically and environmentally and emotionally and those are the disparities that we want we want to bridge those gaps of mental wellness and we can do so by educating just on that fact that loneliness is not a unilateral term Mm -hmm. it is multifaceted like many of the terms connected to and related to mental wellness Mm -hmm. and so Mm -hmm. i think that's where we help the people that's where we disseminate the information and we educate that these are all multifaceted Mm -hmm. terms and it's a multifaceted content Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so in closing (laughs) where we've barely scratched the surface here i know but i'm happy that we were able to uh speak to you the listener on all three topics such as here's the problem and here's how it is functioning in our society and here are a few things we can do to address and solve Mm -hmm. and we thank you for tuning in Mm -hmm. to Real Talk No Cap. I am RJ with Owens Community College Counseling Services. I'm the director and I'm here with Mayjean Lotzenheiser. So pleased to be with you right now. And you can listen in Thursday nights at 10 on Outcast OCCR, Owens Community College Radio, or anytime on the Owens Outcom Student Media Center YouTube channel. Thank you again for tuning in and catch us next time on Real Talk No Cap. This has been Real Talk No Cap.